These are some of the fundamental facts here, the four parts that really make up the individual sound waves. All these play a huge factor in creating that initial snare snap, you know. Today, we're gonna to talk about attack. We're gonna talk, talk about the decay. We're gonna talk about sustain. And we're gonna talk about the release and the relationships that they have with the snare drum. Attack, and what is attack? Attack is that very first hit. That's that sharpness, that sound that is normally heard at the beginning of a note. The initial sharp sound produced when the drumstick hits the drum head is part of the sound that gives the snare drum its distinct punch and presence. The attack is often described as the bright and crisp sound that you often hear right when the drum is struck. The decay refers to that gradual decrease in volume. That sharp downward arrow that's basically like a sharp ski soap from the attack. It goes down fast, but it doesn't go all the way down fast. It, it, it veers off about halfway through and it levels off. That's going to be your decay. It's very, very hard. You got to dissect these things under a microscope to really be able to see the different sound characteristics because it determines how long the sound's going to linger on or sustain after it's being struck. And then after the decay um, is the sustain. It's now, the sustain is, the I think, I feel like one of the most important, important parts of a snare drum just because of the fact that's the part that where you start hearing the tones of the wood. Because a lot of times people will try to cover up the sustain by putting moon gel, by putting gaff tape and everything on your drum head on it. And a lot of times that holds back the sustain, where the sustain is a very important part. Well, sometimes it gives too much sustain. Um, sometimes it's not a sustain. A lot of times if people are playing out live, they like the snare to just to kind of be dead and flat. They like just the attack, nothing else. And then the last part of a, of a note is going to be called the release. That's going to be the part that normally is going to end up with a little bit of a snare buzz if you're not careful. And a lot of times what will happen is that'll be choked out because you get your snare wire so tight to try to eliminate your snare rattle buzz that it ends up choking your drum, making it sound a little bit more dead, kind of sounding like a, almost like a box. I feel like the attack is probably the most important. That's the part that everybody's kind of shoots for. But I feel like that's the part that everybody kind of stops at. They don't really kind of worry about any of the sustain. Because a lot of times with a lot of attack comes less sustain sometimes. You know, sometimes the attack will move out the way faster. But just remember this, anytime you have a drum, and all these play a factor, all this with it. Remember, the beauty of drumming lies in the experimenting of different things, you know, the opportunity to play different various drums and wood and kind of discover your own what method of to play in the drums, you know. I feel like all that kind of helps you become a more rounded drummer, more rounded musician that can give you a lot of depth and a lot of dynamics to your playing. Because when you can start to identify these things, it's going to help you become a more established, a more articulate drummer.